took Aragon a few tries, but he soon had Zalot's edge protected. Confident, he took his fighting stance. Before they started, Grom admonished, These swords won't cut us, but they can still break bones. I would prefer to avoid that, so don't flail around like you normally do. A blow to the neck could prove fatal. Aragon nodded, then struck without warning. Sparks flew off his blade, and a clash of metal filled their campsite as Bronn parried. The sword felt slow and heavy to Aragon after fighting with sticks for so long. Unable to move Zarok fast enough, he received a sharp rap on his knee. They both had large welts when they stopped, Aragon more so than Bronn. He marveled that Zarok had not been scratched or dented by the vigorous pounding it had received. Through a dragon's eye. The next morning, Aragorn woke with stiff limbs and purple bruises. He saw Grom carry the saddle to Sephira and tried to quell his uneasiness. By the time breakfast was ready, Grom had strapped the saddle onto Sephira and hung Aragorn's bags from it. When his bowl was empty, Aragorn silently picked up his bow and went to Sephira. Grom said, Now remember, grip with your knees, guide her with your thoughts and stay as flat as you can on her back. Nothing will go wrong if you don't panic. Aragorn nodded, sliding his unstrung bow into its leather tube, and Bronn boosted him into the saddle. 